a lot of companies go out there and they promise you the world. They say, you know, hey, you install this, you're going to be able to do a thousand times more, or it's going to produce perfect parts every time. And that's not what this company is saying. What Cloud NC's aim is with Cam Assist is to be able to get programmers 80% of the way there in their CAM programs from a solid model with one click. Almost sounds too good to be true, right? It's how do you get 80% of the way there on a program with one click? We're gonna check it out. So here on screen, you can see we have our part. So this is gonna be a two-part operation where we're gonna do everything from one side, flip it, and then do the other side. When we go down to manufacture, that's when we're gonna see this cam assist button. So, like I said, 80% of the way there with one click. So we're gonna do just that. We're gonna click our magic Cloud NC cam assist button, and it's gonna open this menu. So this menu is basically gonna set up how we want Cloud NC's cam assist to program this part. So first we have our tool library. So whether you're working in inch or metric, you can choose. Also, you can customize your own library. So essentially the library is where Cloud NC's cam assist is gonna go pull your tooling from. So whether you have custom tooling that you wanna set up, whether you uh, don't use certain kinds of end mills, you know, we don't use bull nose here, we only use ball. So I can go and take them out of there. Uh, maybe I have three flute tooling and certain diameters that's not in here, I can add them in. But it's a very good starting spot. Now, although I'm in Canada, we use inch and imperial for everything. So I'm gonna choose inch. Our stock material, aluminum, brass, whatever we want it to be. Today we're gonna do aluminum just for sake of expediency. And we can choose our machine. So I already have this set up for my Haas VF4SS, but when I go in here, you can see they have pretty much every kind of machine under the sun in here. And let's say that it's not set up in here. My machine, I have some weird one that maybe was a short run or it's a custom machine. I can go and choose some generic options with, you know, to kind of give it some specs. We're gonna leave it on my VF4SS right now. Machining mode, so like I mentioned at the top of the video, they have actually released A3 Plus 2 for five axis work. I'm not gonna use it today because I don't have three plus two on my machines. Uh, we're just gonna do three axis, but it's a new feature. I highly recommend checking it out. I got to play around with it a little bit and it, believe me, it works better than you'd think, but we're gonna stick with this one in three axis. Now, the one thing that I often criticize a lot of demo stuff for, you know, when you're at a trade show and you see some part running perfectly, you go, yeah, of course, you know, this is a perfect work holding situation. This is a perfect machining situation. It looks nice, but what's the reality of that? Well, Cloud NC thought of that too. So they have right here in the target setups, work holding security. So what that's going to do is let's say this is excellent. I've pretty much welded this tool to the table or this workpiece to the table. This is going to use higher feeds, higher speeds, bigger tooling because the workpiece setup can take it. But let's say that maybe I'm not being able, I'm not in a position where I can hold it as well. You know, maybe I'm holding on to only a little bit of the part. Maybe it's a thin walled piece of uh, extrusion that I'm starting with. I can go and slide this down. And what that's gonna do, you can see right below here, is drop the diameter of the tooling as one aspect. So it's gonna have less force on the tool as it goes, or on the uh, workpiece as it goes. But let's say for sake of illustration, we pretty much welded this thing to the table. It's gonna use bigger tools, heavier cuts. So now I go through to my tool use. So this goes and pulls your tool library. So what I can do here is I can go through and say, hey, do you know what? We actually don't like the 1 8 bull nose we have in house. I can take this off the list. You know, maybe I'm waiting on an order of more uh, 0.17 drills. I can take them off the list. Or maybe I can say, you know what? I really wanted to use this tool, I can gray out everything but that tool and prioritize it. Easy peasy. So I go through, now I have advanced. And it's funny, because it says advanced, these are advanced options, but the interface for this is so, so, so simple. It's very, very handy. So I can go and say, do I want it to do face milling? Maybe I don't want it to do face milling. I'm already starting with ground stock, perhaps. I can take that off. Bulk roughing. So, you know, these are typical roughing tool paths. Do I want detailed roughing? Do I want it to go in there and take a lot of little cuts out? I can do that too. Deburring, hole making, I can choose all these things here. And then also I can go through and say, do you know what? 
do I want to use a chamfer mill to deburr this, or do I want to use a ball mill? We're going to use a chamfer mill. So I'm going to hit run. Now this is when it's sending this file with all my options out to the cloud. And you're going to be surprised how quick this is. Now, is it instant? No, but it might as well be. It gives you enough time to pretty much go get a cup of coffee and come back. So it's going to go, it's going to compute all my finishing strategies, all my approaches, and it's going to give them back to me as tool paths. Now, here's the thing, guys. This isn't giving you recommendations. It's going to do it for you. Now, you got to check it. We want to look at it. I don't want to take this, pull it straight out of, the, uh, out of my computer, put it in a machine, press go, and walk away. That'd be crazy. No matter what, you got to check your CAM programs. But like it kind of says on the tin, it's going to get you 80% of the way there. You know, there's no value in a programmer going through and having to select 30 holes to drill. It's much easier if they can just put this on there and away it goes. So here we are. We now have our setups. So for CAM Assist, we go and click on this here. You can see it's going to export all my toolpaths into this here. So we have our facing toolpath. You can see that's a pretty standard facing toolpath. Um, it's basically just taking the top of the stock off. We have our roughing. This is going to go through and rough out that part. You can see this is basically the way I would program it. It's very, very similar. If I go to flat, this is going to finish all my flats to make sure that those are coming out in spec. I go to wall. Again, you can see everywhere where there's a flat wall, that's going through and finishing that part for me. Hole making, again, it's going to drill my holes for me. I believe if there's threads in this, in the model, it will actually pick that up and thread them as well, but I'd have to double check that. Chamfering, you can see it's going to go and chamfer these areas here. It's identified that that is a chamfer, so it chamfers it for you. And then I also have my deburring. So it's going to go through and see everywhere that it can deburr or needs a deburr and deburr it. And you can see it's not going to run that tool right into the wall anywhere, even with those angles where it needs to stop a little short. It's just fine. Now, if I go over to my second setup, you can see I need to turn this off and turn this one on. You can see that this is going to finish it off on the other side, but we'll save that for another day. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to run that program more or less straight out of the machine. What I did is I scaled that model to about 50% just because I didn't have a piece of aluminum big enough on the shelf. I reprogrammed it, same thing with that one touch system. And the only thing I did is I changed one feed. I dropped it a little bit because I was a little nervous. And I, that's all I did. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna put that straight in my uh, BF2 and we're gonna run that program and see how it comes out. Again, this is straight out of Cloud NC's Cam Assist. So there you have it guys, very, very interesting stuff. Um, I'm definitely gonna be playing around with it more. As mentioned, we did show it in Fusion, but it is, I believe, in beta for Mastercam at the moment. So I highly recommend you go check it out. They do have a free trial um, that does include that three plus two. Check it out for yourself, play around with it, see how you like it. I highly recommend you do. In any case, guys, I'd like to know in the comments below, what do you think about this technology? Is it something you're interested in? Is it something you're still a little nervous about? I'd love to know your thoughts below.